I would lose perhaps friends and uh, I'd kind of be an outcast in my own community. Or I, I didn't really know what would happen if I, if I, if I go to the ways of God. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. On today's program, you'll hear from a man who knew he wasn't right with God, but wasn't really sure he was ready for what it would cost him if he decided to follow Jesus. My name is uh, Raymond Sparkling Eyes, and I'm from Goodfist Lake, Alberta, Canada. And uh, I have been a Christian now for over 50 years. And so it's been quite a long time. But to begin with, um, as a child, I went to school in, with, uh, amongst, with, with white kids and we had to walk three miles and uh, at the first school we went to for three years and then one year we went to another school that was four and a half miles from our home. Later on, when I was about 13, I went to a residential school. It was all native school. But at home, growing up at home, well, most of our livelihood, um, uh, well, it was a large family of us. There was uh, eight of us kids. So uh, when I was about 16, I started helping my dad just to uh, make a living, really. We did um, trapping in the spring. And, and then we uh, also... Um, did a lot of timber work, like you know, working with a uh, logging, like uh, sawing, and also um, we would cut posts for farmers and sell these uh, fence posts to farmers and different things like that. We would also work for uh, farmers and all these things. That's the way we made our living. Also hunting and. Uh, and fishing. I belonged to a religion, but and went to a church and all that. But uh, it wasn't until I was about nineteen when I first heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, how He came to seek and to save that which was lost. By this time, when I was 19, I was really, um, my life was in a mess. Growing up in a fairly good home, that is, uh, there was no drinking and things like that. And my parents were, were quite uh, strict with us, but not overly strict, but they were um, quite clean living. But as I grew older, I departed from that kind of a home training. And then as I grew older, what I really sought in life was fun, like dancing, things like that, and uh, be a party of some kind, like young people would get together. Well, I try to be kind of the um, kind of leader in such places. That kind of living was dragging me more into real bondage. That is, uh, I just was uh, really um, in need of some kind, some kind of uh, a different lifestyle. Because this life I was living, although uh, kind of uh, the leader on dance floor and also in a ball team, things like that, didn't really bring fulfillment in my life. There was some lack. And then I began to uh, search 
for something better. And and there was um, a young man in our reservation that became a Christian. That is, he had found something in his life that seemed to really uh, uh, bring satisfaction to his life. And I began observing his life, and uh, I know that this is what I was lacking in the kind of life I was leading. And I craved for this same kind of life that he, he had found. But still, because of the bondage I was in, in the pleasures of what he called sin, and... Uh, I just um, was not willing to let go. In fact, it was a hold of me. It was not that I didn't want to let go, but uh, it really uh, took a real hold of me, like I was in bondage. It just went on for quite a while. I wanted this same lifestyle my friend had found, and it really... Uh, came to the place where I um, not only um, seen his life, but I started listening to radio programs that presented the gospel of Jesus Christ. How a person can be forgiven of his sin, how he can get saved and all that. And then about that time also I there was a missionary that came to our reservation. And all these uh, things, all these uh, testimonies and messages, and also just watching the lifestyle of other people that were living for God, really uh, made an impact upon my life. But still, I just was not able to really uh, let go or let God do something for me. And it got to be so, um, I remember uh, that one summer I, I was so, um, so hungering for such a life, and yet, on the other hand, I know what it would cost me. Because being a leader... Amongst uh, the young people in, in, in the pleasures of sin, like, as I say, dancing and things like that of the world, I know if I took the step towards the Lord Jesus Christ, I would, uh, I would lose perhaps friends and uh, I'd kind of be an outcast in my own community. Or I, I didn't really know what would happen if I, if, I, if I go to the ways of God? So this is what the, th- this is the thing that was really heavy on my, on my heart. Is, uh, because I knew if I became a Christian, certain things would have to go from my life. I knew, I knew the cost. So for a whole over, um, oh, I don't know how many months, many months anyway, I really um, thought about these things seriously, very seriously. It got to the point that last summer uh, before uh, I came to a decision that I start putting dates. Like um, we have treaty days here in, in our reserve. and. I would um, say to myself, after this big sports day, I'll get right with the Lord. I will come to him and accept him as my personal savior. And this day that I have set after this sports day would come and then it would come and go, and still, I didn't do what I intended to do. 
So it set another date. And uh, this went on the whole summer. I'd set a date, and and then I it would just come and go. I still wasn't right with God. And it got so that that I uh, knew what I, I ought to do because I believe the Holy Spirit of God was speaking to me, was dealing with me, and I was just not willing to do what he was telling me. And then this one Sunday, our ball team went to play a baseball game off our reservation uh, to compete with uh, some of the off-reserve people. Like, and we played ball. I'm not sure who even won, but just after the ball, ball game, uh, they said there's going to be a dance after midnight. And it was announced. And so most of our friends, our ball team, stayed for that, for, for the dance. But meanwhile, as we were waiting for midnight to come, or but shortly after the games were over, there was this preacher pulling a little trailer, and uh, all that he was living in a little trailer. But he um, started uh, inviting people to come into the little schoolhouse there, and for he was going to have a service, a gospel service, and. A lot of people were going in, and there was not very many left outside. I didn't want to really go in because what was uh, uh, bothering me or uh, because this voice that was speaking to me in my heart. So, but finally, uh, well, one of my friends told me, well, everybody's going in. Why don't we go in? So we went in. When we went into the schoolhouse, it was full, and uh, the only bench that was left in that schoolhouse was the front one. <laughs> well, that's kind of funny. But being in the front row is just where Ray needed to be. How about you? Is there a battle going on inside of you? You know, the so-called pleasures of life are short-lived. And as you've heard, they never really satisfy. Many have wasted their lives chasing things that left them empty and alone. And then in the end, they stand before God without hope, only to face His judgment. But it doesn't have to be that way. He tells us clearly in the Bible that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friend, you will never find peace for your soul until you're right with God. That's why he sent Jesus. By faith in Jesus and his saving work, God restores our broken relationship with him. If you would like to know more, let me encourage you to visit our website, withoutreservation.com, and click on the tab, New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. We're also online at facebook.com forward slash without reservation. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's more to Ray's story, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.